Hey what's up guys this is Narendra and in this video series we are going to create a GraphQL using Apollo Server Express package and where we are going to do some authentication stuff as well as we are also going to look into how we can handle image uploading on the GraphQL server and this took me quite a bit to figure out and then also I'm going to, we will be discussing how we can create a post based application with a pagination app. and for the database we are going to use MongoDB so i wouldn't recommend going with this tutorial if you have no knowledge zero knowledge about node express and how the things work in node express so beforehand you just have to go and get into some basic prerequisite of learning node.js and having a couple of bit of javascript knowledge otherwise you won't be you won't be able to follow along with the tutorial and this is going to be quite a kind of advanced project so which i have been planning to release from last like Two months for now and so let's get started without that without any with that all set let's get started with our project so what I'm gonna do is simply uh, here here is my Google Chrome and let's see what is GraphQL and how what is the difference between the normal REST API as well as a GraphQL so if you search on a Google difference between GraphQL and REST API. So here we have the first one, first thing, and we can go through that article. That article has a lot, and then I can explain better. And you can also check out this video. I'll mention this link in the description. So what happens is, uh, for the in the REST APIs, we have a separate endpoints to get a certain certain data. But in a GraphQL, what happens, whatever is required, that we send to a supercharged endpoint and which is received and then it is parsed what the user wants from the client side or the client side wants and then it will resolve that. So first of all, we have to define a query and it's a kind of a querying language. So uh, it has, and also the benefit is like it's statically typed. So whatever things we want, we have to define it like uh, there are static types like what kind of data we are going to deal with that and we can also create our custom types uh, we can also do lots of lots lots of stuff using that as well as like uh, we have a one single endpoint so here we have a lot of endpoints so you can see as from the diagram you can see this we have so many endpoints for this just to access particular user post and the user id and then the followers we have a lot of endpoints we have to deal with them but in graphql we have a single endpoint and on that we'll push some query from this client and based on that query whatever the type of thing which we want we will have to define that in our query on the server and then it will it will go through a resolver function then it will resolve the data back in the backend and then it will give it to you back so that's what happens in the GraphQL and the only request that it accepts that's a post request and we can do a lot of cool stuff with that and one more thing i would like to say there are two types of queries so one is standard query the second is a mutation so what is mutation mutation is nothing but if you want to have if you want to change something on the server like adding a data to a adding or updating or deleting a data to a server so that will go through a mutation that is a kind of mutation that means we are some we are muting something on the server as well as uh, on the client side that's uh, uh, on the client side, there's nothing to do that. We just have to mention what we want, what we are trying to do, and then we have to register those resolver functions in the queries and the mutations based on the types or the action, what, they, what you want to achieve on the server side. So with that all set, let's get started with our project and just dive into the code. So currently I'm in my root of the application. Let me quickly increase the font size and I'm gonna get into my projects directory which I have already created and if I ls over here and you can see that I have created a lot of things a lot of things I'm working on so I'm gonna create a new directory and prerequisite is that to you just go to this link and download node.js if you haven't installed just download it from here and then just you are all good to go with that so I'm gonna create a new directory and I'm gonna name it Apollo post crud so 
if I ls that we, that project folder has been created in my project directory, and I'm gonna get into that project directory, so I will simply say Apollo. And now if I ls, this is completely empty and we don't have anything inside. Uh, meanwhile, I'm for the database, I'm using Docker container version, uh, Docker based container. So I have already installed Docker, but you don't, it's not like a prerequisite that you should have Docker. You can also go with the MongoDB Atlas campus, uh, MongoDB Atlas. So you can go to here, MongoDB Atlas. And from here, you can create a new instance and then get a server so URL for your MongoDB connection. And let me close that too. Uh, let's open a new tab over here. So I'm gonna start my MongoDB using Docker, but you can go. You are free. You are free to use any kind of database, whatever you want. But throughout the series, we'll be using this Docker version. So, so if I say Docker ps a, and you can see my Mongo is already running. So it's running on a port. Uh, 27017 which is mapped to inside the docker then it is mapped to 27017 so I can access my database using this port uh, but you can you are feel free you are free to go ahead so I'm using local version of MongoDB and I'm gonna get into that MongoDB container so I want to connect it with a shell so for that I can simply say docker exec and with the interactive ID I want to use Mongo container with the Mongo so Mongo is the name of the image. Uh, okay, so I made a typo. Exec, it's simply exec. Well, I think I'm making a lot of typos. So Docker, exec ID, Mongo, Mongo. So this might take a moment just to get into that container and it will connect with our shell. And so that we can see, we can access all the data, whatever we have inside our Docker. So you can see that has been connected and this is our Mongo URI that is running so we can after that we can uh, just have to append our database name and instead I will be using this Mongo URI you can, are free to go ahead and get get that Atlas URI if you don't want to get into these Docker stuff that's perfectly fine with this video so now I'm gonna create in my Apollo client postgrad directory I'm gonna create a new node.js project and the way we can do that by simply saying npm init and dash y with the default options and this will create a packet.json file over here and with the license of isc so now if i ls that you can see that we have packet.json file has been created in that directory and i'm going to open it with my favorite text editor that visual studio code and for that yeah you are also free to go ahead and use whatever whatever text editor you are comfortable with like a, a sublime text or pycharm or anything else that suits you better so I'm gonna quickly increase this font size so that you can see everything properly and I'm gonna open it in a full screen mode so for that just press F11 and this will open up it in a full screen mode so now I'm gonna go and open an integrated terminal and for that you have to press control back text and as I do that you are already inside that directory and now we can access the directory using our terminal uh, integrated terminal so if I ls, you have the packet.json file, and before doing anything, I just want to change it to MIT, which is an open source. And in my author, I'm gonna write my name. You can put your name there. And that's basically for now. You can put provide some extra metadata for a like example. This is simple GraphQL Apollo Apollo GraphQL server using Express JS. So now it's time to go ahead and install a couple of dependencies that we'll be requiring in our application in order to uh, in order to start this app. So the way we can do that by using npm command. So npm dash i, and the first thing which I'm going to be needing is Express, then Apollo server so Express, because we'll be using our express version of apollo so that it can be applied as a middleware to our express application and then we can do a lot of cool stuff and now it's time to go ahead and install another package called bcrypt.js 
so for that bcrypt js not dot js but bcrypt js and this will give us like a feature to hash our passwords so that we can store plain pa uh, we should not store the plain password in the database otherwise it is prone to like a lot of hackers if your database get hacked then anyone can access your password so before saving that password into the database we should mask that password then the second thing is for, I needed some kind of authentication token so I'm gonna using I, I will be using JSON web token and this package will be helpful in hashing our token we we can issue and based on the time limit and expiry date we can see who, who which user is allowed to access any resource or any graph your resolver query so web token and then I'm gonna install consola so it's my favorite package because I like I like to start I like my code to look come up with the proper badges and all all other cool stuff so JSON the token consola we have and then with that I think we are good to go let me quickly check if we have something else so yeah one more package which is very very important that's called ESM and this package will be help because I don't like writing code in previous primitive Java script way so I will be uh, I want to use ES6 features so I can use this package and under the hood this will compile this will run our code in our normal standard ES5 way but uh, on the on the top on the front end side we will be able to write we will be able to use a lot of cool ES7 or ES6 features in runtime and then one more package so since we are gonna be connecting with client at any point of time then we need a package called console or course and then I think yeah so one more package that which I forgot to install that's a mongoose and this package this mongoose package will be helpful in connecting with our mongodb database so you can look for this mongoose and there's a nice documentation available on npmjs.org uh, npmjs.com website and you can learn a lot of stuff there then one more package which I'm gonna install that's called yup and since we are sending some data from our we'll be sending some data from our client to the server so we need some kind of validate some 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 kind of library to validate our package on the server or our in, incoming data from a server and also once uh, also we will be dealing a lot of JSON data so I'm gonna install another another middleware that's called body parser and that's it let's install it if we need something else we'll all we are always free to install those things here at any point of time so this might take a moment and once it is done I'm gonna quickly pause my video so once it is done we'll be right back and stage uh, we will jump in our code so you can see my that all the packages has been installed very well and this didn't take a lot it just took me like a minute so now you can see that all the packages are here added to our dependencies list in our package.json and also you can find this node modules folder in our root of the directory so this is containing all sort of packages that we have installed in our application so they are living here and whenever we want we can import them directly so before doing get uh, before getting started with our server uh, with our application I want to set up ESM and setup is very uh, very uh, very easy so we can simply say node dash R and ESM so now it's uh, our ESM script is ready and now I'm gonna create a development script so what I'm gonna do have if you haven't installed node mod type of package which will reload your server you can install it always by simply but you have to install it globally and the way you can do that by simply saying npm i dash g node mod and I, ha I too have I have to integrate uh, update the version which I have currently installed in my Ubuntu so you have to open sudo on Mac and Linux on Windows it will just work fine and uh, it is asking for my password and this will update my node mod package that we have installed so now for the development is under the development environment I'm gonna use it uh, using uh, node mod so I'm gonna say node mod dash r ESM so with that we are ready with our development script as well as our start script so that we can start our application in our production mode as well as our 
this dev, uh, in, under the development environment. And I forgot to install a package called .env. So basically, I'm gonna I'm not gonna put everything inside the database, uh, everything inside our direct code. So instead of that, I'm gonna put it some kind of environment variables. And in our root of the application, I'm gonna create a new file called .env. And I'm also installing this package. So I'm gonna say npm install .env. And this might take a moment. So once we are done, let's start looking into that. So all the constants of our application will get in here. And meanwhile, I'm gonna create a new folder called, uh, actually new file because in root, it is the, our script is looking for our index.js entry point file. If you have any other instead of index.js, like app.js, so you just have to mention the file over here. But I will go with a standard that's index.js. So I am simply going to create, and also I'm going to create a new folder called src. And within this, our whole application will live, and this is just the entry point. So we'll be importing our src. And whatever is inside as index.js inside that src that will be automatically picked up. So I'm going to create a new file called index.js in our src. So this is our root of application. Here everything will, live, will be living inside. And now I'm going to create a couple of folders. So first folder which I'm going to create is models. The second folder which I'm going to create is configuration. And we'll look into one by one. Third folder which I'm going to create is called graphql. So all the resolver and the queries and the directives will get inside our GraphQL and we'll explain them one by one as we proceed further with our video. And for now, yeah, one more folder which I forgot to uh, say that's called uh, functions. So here we will be having our storing our standard functions inside here. And then also I'm gonna create a folder called validators. So all the validation rules for our inputs will be living inside this. And with everyone in all the directories, I'm gonna create a new file called index.js. And I'm gonna quickly copy that, paste it everywhere inside our GraphQL, inside our models, and even inside our validators. So all the folders are now having our in their entry points. So now we can access them directly using this the folder name. So we don't have to worry about like specifying the names and all those stuff. So now let's, the installation is pretty much straightforward and now we just have to start our Express application over here. And the way we can do that by simply bringing in our Express. So we can simply say import Express from our Express. And with that, initialize the Express application and we'll simply say const app so we are creating a variable and I'm gonna simply say Express so this we are just bringing in this function from our Express which we have installed so this will automatically pull it from our node modules and then we are just invoking that function and then we are saying that we are having our application over here so now I'm gonna create another function called start app. And this will be, a, I'm using error function. And I'll simply say app.listen. And we'll pass our port over here. So for that port, later we'll put it from our environment. So for now that's fine for us. And for, we'll spin it up our server on look for thousand. And we'll pass that variable over here. So, and once our application has started listening on port 4000, if it is not busy, then it will give some kind of console log statement, so kind of callback, so that means we have, so for callbacks and console statements, I have installed package called consola, so I'm gonna bring up function called success, as well as error, fu errors, error from our, cons error functions from our consola package, and you can read about the documentation because if you're in a development environment, development, if you're a developer, you have to just read a lot. Like I read a lot and that shaped me in a better developer. So that you, you should do too. 
Um, and our success, so this takes two parameters, an object with two parameters, the message, and I'll pass that. So we're started on port. And instead of this normal string formats, I'm going to use backticks so that we can inject our variable directly into the strings. And this is our application will be running. And now we have to just invoke this function because we just have defined our function, but that function haven't is not invoked yet. So, and once we are done, I think we are good to go with our application for now. So I'm going to say npm run dev. And this will this will pull in our node mod script, and you can see here we are getting some error. And that's basically because success spelling is wrong. So, and as I save it after the change, you can see we have our service started in port 4000 with the error sign that's saying that. And I also want to pass a batch variable so you can read it for documentation and set it to true and now if I save it now it will be with a success like this so now if I go here I go to my Google uh, Chrome browser that I use for developing developing front-end a lot of cool stuff we can do with here so if I navigate to localhost 4000 and not the GraphQL and if I go to cannot we are getting a weird error that says cannot get and it's not an error because we so far we haven't registered any kind of fraud in our application that's why we are just uh, it's the, the app is simply not able to find that what do we have on that resource or on that url so we'll start looking into that in the next in next video and stay tuned with my channel and keep on supporting keep on spreading your love on my channel and happy coding guys Thank you guys. We'll see you in the new next video how we can set it up, all those stuff. Thank you.